So a lot of the work that I do is based upon work levels. I talk a lot about work levels, and quite frankly, work levels are not a real well-known phenomenon. Although they're a naturally occurring phenomenon, they're just not well-known. So what I want to do today is talk a little bit about work levels. So if we think about something like H2O, we know that H2O can exist as water, but we also know if we lower the temperature below 32 Fahrenheit, we get ice. If we go above 212, we get steam. Well, work is similar. It has a different nature, a different state at different levels. And that has a huge impact on the way that we design organizations. When we don't understand work levels, we can really get ourselves into trouble, even with the best of intentions. So the reason why work levels are important to me and why I want to talk to you about them is because they have such a huge impact on organizational design, which leads to engagement, which leads to productivity and efficiency. So I'm going to start with work level one. And work level one, if we talk about the nature of work, what does work look like at work level one? It's following procedures to produce something. So the contribution to the organization is producing either an output, an actual widget, a thing, or delivering a service to specification. So there's always a procedure or a piece of training that we're following trying to get to an end goal which is clearly specified. It's either in a widget or a service. At level two, what we're going to do here is accumulate bits and pieces of information to diagnose problems or solve problems. So we're adding things together to look around and say, hmm, I see something coming. I'm going to go ahead and head that off. At work level one, the difference here is we follow a procedure, and if we run into a problem, we either then follow another procedure that we've already been told about, or we go ask for help. So that would be a, di a main difference between work levels one and two. At work level three, we are actually following a serial A leads to B leads to C. So it's following one or more serial processes to accomplish a goal. Now at level two, we may be doing multiple things, but we're not actually having that cause and effect. First, I have to do this, which will then lead to this, which will then lead me here. So at level three, we actually have what even a, a feeling of movement involved. At level four, we're again dealing with these serial pathways. However, we have more than one, and we have to coordinate them. So not only does A lead to B leads to C, but one leads to two leads to three. And at some point, they intersect, and I have to deal with the intersection. So I have to balance my resources among multiple serial pathways. At level three, I may have multiple serial pathways, but I think about them relatively independently. So for, for example, in an HR organization, at level four, I might have benefits, I might have training, I might have recruiting all reporting into me, and I have to balance that whole bucket of multiple serial pathways. If I'm working at level three, I might just be in charge of one of those, for example, benefits. At level two, I would actually be overseeing, potentially, the person who's doing the paperwork surrounding benefits. So at level one, I might be doing paperwork regarding benefits, checklists, saying, does this match? Do I have all the information I need? At level two, generally, these people supervise level one, and they're looking at daily oversight of your operation. So I need to make sure that my people are trained. I need to hire staff. I need to make sure they're producing to spec. I have to be looking at the spec and saying, should I add something? Should I subtract something? Is our current spec even serving us? So that's what we do at level two. At level three, we're concerned with making current operations excellent. So now that we have this spec and we've decided we're going to produce this thing, how do we set up serial processes so that we're not constantly reinventing the wheel? That we, and then we also want to keep tweaking and thinking about how do I make this cheaper? How do I make this faster? How do I make this more efficient? So making current operations excellent is a huge piece here at three. Also at three, we do contingency planning. Gosh, what if this were to happen? How would we deal with that? So we have plans in place to take care of that. At level three, we do a lot of implementation, implementation planning and rollouts. At level four, what I'm doing is I'm constantly looking at current operations and I'm saying, hmm, because there also is a level five, we're not going to talk about it today, but at level five we create a strategy. We have a model, we have a strategy. We have five-year goals. We have goals that we're trying to meet. Level four people are the translators between this conceptual strategy and 
current operations. So the question I'm always asking if I'm working at level four is, do our current operations as they are currently designed, do they still suit our strategy and are they going to get us there? So again, for example, if I were um, some type in sales and marketing, I might think about, do, does our current product mix, is it gonna get us our goals that we're looking at? Maybe we have a product that's a real dog. It's just not selling. We're not a market leader, and it may be time to cut our losses on that product and get rid of it altogether. So that would be a decision that would be made at four with the approval of five. Then at three, I would be the person who would be tasked with potentially taking that off the market. What is the serial process by which we would withdraw that? We would need to close down production. We would need to get rid of the resources. We might need to rearrange our headcount. So planning for that and actually executing that would be a level three task. So that in a nutshell is just levels one through four. They're usually a, a business unit organization tops out at five. There are also organizations, larger ones, that can top out at six, seven, or eight. But that's beyond the scope of what I want to talk about today.